All right, gonna give you guys a quick race recap from uh, actually yesterday, last actually this morning. We uh, ran the feature at like one o'clock in the morning is when it started. So today's Sunday. Um, we raced on Saturday, obviously, but it carried over until Sunday. Anyways, long story short, we qualified second, which is really good, but that has its disadvantages as well. Is the guy that qualified third and the guy that qualified fourth were only two hundredths slower than us. So basically how you qualify is how you're going to start in the race. But it's kind of the opposite of what some people would think is the slowest cars start on the front and the faster you are, you start on the rear. So qualifying second fastest, that, that puts us on the last row on the inside but the two cars directly in front of us are only 200 slower than us. Um, the way that the track works that we race at, you really gotta be two tenths faster to be able to pass them on the high side. Otherwise, they gotta make a pretty big mistake or get caught up in traffic. So we knew we were really gonna have our work cut out for us, um, being at the cars in front of us were, were that close in times with us. So long story short, um, initial drop of the green flag, we actually got a really good jump and made it to third place in like a half a lap. Um, just the way the field kind of scattered and people had problems, but they threw a caution. So that's a complete restart. So that kind of sucked. Second restart, um, we got up to like fourth and then we couldn't get to the bottom though. We were stuck on the high side. And I think if I would have just forced it down, I would have got down, but it was a little bit sketchy and kind of got caught in the left rear here. But, you know, normally in circle track racing, if the guy below you is here, it's his spot. If he's way back here, that's my spot. Well, I felt the hit and I kind of moved up because I didn't want to pinch someone down and I realized after the fact that it was not his spot he was way back here but you live and learn there and i didn't want to tear up the car so anyways we got stuck in fourth uh we ran like 10 laps in fourth got to third we're working on second place and that was one of the guys that was actually so the guy that was in first and the guy that was in second at this point were the guys that were 200 slower than us um so we're working on second place we were definitely faster um it was more than 200 by the time you know late in the race his car was going away but so was ours um something was going on it seemed like with the carburetor is i roll the throttle on coming off the corners so kind of just past the midpoint of the corner you're rolling into that throttle anytime i'd roll in the throttle the car was kind of hic hiccuping and stumbling if i would just flat foot it it was clean it, it was running perfect but when you're just flat footing it like that, you're spinning the rear tires and you're really abusing the tires. But I was kind of stuck where if I was rolling the throttle, the engine was not happy. Um, it was just like I said, kind of coughing, hiccuping. If you flat foot it, perfect. It, it was just so dead consistent like that. So I was picking my battles and trying to flat foot it as much as I could. Well, anyways, a caution comes out. And again, we get a really good jump on the restart and another caution comes out. So we got, we got up to second on the restart, another caution comes out, lap didn't get completed. So we go back to third. Um, the next restart, we spin the tires. So we spun the tires, so then we fell back to third and that puts us with about seven laps to go. About seven laps to go, I just out of nowhere, I, I don't even know at what point of the track it honestly happened but i just feel the engine just just lose all power essentially i mean it's still running but it 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 dropped two cylinders without making any noise any anything just boom two cylinders are gone i'm like whoa what what the heck's going on so i was thinking well hey it was stumbling everything else the carburetor's jacked up so i'm kind of pumping it with fuel because it actually did that before when the needle and seat got stuck pumping it with fuel trying to figure out what's going on I look at the oil pressure oil pressure looks fine temperature's fine you know meanwhile I, i'm still in third place so i hold it off for like a half a lap and then i just pull up the track and let the uh fourth place guy buy me while i'm still trying to gather my thoughts of 
can I limp this thing home for another five laps or is it about to scatter? So I, I made the decision. It, it's, I think it's going to scatter. So I pulled it off into the pits and it's still a good oil pressure. But as I came into the pits, the engine idled down. It did drop below 20 PSI oil pressure, but the engine was trying to shut off. So it could have been down at like 500 RPM at that point. When I revved it to like 3000, it went back to 60. So it seems like the oil pressure is a little low, but nothing crazy. I shut it off at that point, pushed it back to the trailer, got it all loaded up, yada, yada. Um, looked underneath it, no rods hanging out. So that's good, but I knew it was hurt. So anyways, this morning I got out here. Oh my God. So excuse me if I'm kind of rambling. I only got two hours of sleep. So I've got this cylinder head ripped off and I'll show you what we got so far. So that right there is a damaged piston. And what would normally cause that is dropping a valve. So we'll go over here to the cylinder head. Sure enough, we dropped an intake valve and we did lose two cylinders because what happened was the debris from this one got into this cylinder and actually smashed the spark plug. So we dropped two cylinders like I thought. Um, I pulled all the plugs on the other side. They look fine. I still got to pull that cylinder head off. And um, somehow we're still leading the points. It's not by much now. We were in really good shape. And now we are not in good shape. But I got to figure out how to fix this thing and fix it in a hurry. The other thing I want to show you guys is look inside those header tubes. It was absolutely having a fuel issue. It was having a carburetor issue. That's still a little mind boggled. And I'll show you another, some other evidence there is, if you look at these exhaust valves, they're really white. Yeah, you can see that. So it was definitely running lean and it shouldn't have been because the fuel pumps been replaced, the fuel lines have been all replaced, everything's been blown through. Um, we did have a fuel pump that was bad this year carburetor i just went through and triple checked again everything's fine in that and here's why i say it shouldn't have been running lean this carburetor's been on this combination all year and the plugs have been fine i added five jet sizes to the front of the carburetor since the last time out because i noticed last time out all of a sudden it's starting to run lean well five jet sizes up made no difference it's still running just as lean as what it was now here's the weird thing is normally if that's a fuel volume issue, it would have gotten worse wide open. It didn't. It's, it's always in the transition from 20 to 30% throttle to 70% throttle. If you flat foot it, it's clean and crisp. You would think if it's a volume issue when I added jet, the flat footing it would have gotten worse as well. But it's still just that transition. Maybe it is a fuel pump, but... Man, that's a new Holly pump with like three races on it. So that's weird. I know the lines are all good. I'm just, I'm a little perplexed on what is causing the lean condition. Like the jetting on a carburetor stays relatively the same with your combination once you get it dialed in. Going up five jet sizes, if it was a little bit lean, should have absolutely corrected any kind of normal environmental changes in, in the air fuel ratio. So. I'm not sure. We definitely have a lean problem. So the next question is, is did our lean problem cause our draw valve to drop? And the answer is maybe, because we would have had some pretty extreme cylinder temperatures. It is a little weird. I would have expected it to drop an exhaust valve, not an intake. So I'm not sure. It's a little bit too early to say. Like I said, I've got to really kind of sit down and think about everything. I am a person that likes to figure out what caused this i have a couple different suspicions but i've got to figure that out before we can move forward i have a general game plan on possibly repairing this but it's a little bit too early to say um some guys that have messed with a decent amount of engines or what or just do engine repair might recognize these pistons so these are just factory 93 to 97 LT1 pistons. This engine's factory bore, factory stroke. This engine's been in, in a circle track car since 2015. So this has only been in this car since the end of last year and this year. 
But this engine has treated us very, very well. So I'm gonna try to find another factory LT1 piston, just a used piston, that's what this was. I will clean up that cylinder and put another piston and rod because they're a uh, pressed in pin on the rod. So I'll just change the rod and the piston. Um, this has the ARP studs or whatever for the rod bolts. So I'll change those as well, but I am going to be looking for at least one LT1 piston and rod, and hopefully I can just change that piston and that rod, check over the bottom end, maybe slide a couple bearings in it. I don't know what's going on there. I still got to check. And then replace the cylinder heads. So in a perfect world, I get a new set of cylinder heads, and I just change that piston and rod. I can do that. I can get that done in time. So hopefully that's feasible and I don't find anything else too crazy. Why I want to just replace this is because you can see there's a big part of that guide boss that's broken off. And honestly, these are those free cylinder heads that we got and they've been repaired a bunch. So that could have been part of the problem, but I really don't think so. I looked them over really well. Um, the valves were supposed to be new and they were manly. I did confirm they had the part numbers right on them. Um, and they were new. Actually, I know they were new. They, they were brand new. So I don't know what happened there. I don't remember if they were just like a standard replacement, the cheapest valve possible that Manly makes, or if they were a decent valve. I'm honestly not sure. I'd have to go back and look at the part numbers. But I've got some ideas of what I'm going to do cylinder head-wise. Um, i got to see what's available. That's another pr big problem we face. But I don't have a whole lot of options of what cylinder head I can run because these pistons don't have a whole lot of valve clearance. Um, that is one possibility um, that just hit piston to valve clearance, but here's why I don't think that's the case. That one's never hit, that one's never hit, that one's never hit. It's never touched before. So why would it now? Well, it is possible that we spun a rod bearing on that one and then it hit. Didn't sound like it, but I've got to check over everything. But Anyways, what I was getting at is I have to run a 64cc chamber to get any kind of decent compression out of this. And even a 64 only puts me at like 9.8 to 10 to 1, which is fine. Um, but, and this is only a 560, it's 560 on the intake, 600 on the exhaust lift cam. It is the intake valve that's tight, um, but we had it set at 60,000 intake valve clearance, which I've ran stuff tighter than that and never had an issue. Um... But my point is, we've just, we've got to be real particular with what cylinder heads we run because not all cylinder heads are going to clear these pistons. So, yeah, I think that'll be it for now, guys. I'm going to get this thing ripped apart and try to put this thing back together, see if I can piece it together. Um, yeah, we'll go from there. Don't forget to like and subscribe.